Hey guys, welcome to the video for greatest common factor, or also known as a GCF. Um, so we have found GCFs, or you guys have, when you guys were in middle school, um, but now we're going to do it to where we're doing it with polynomials. So how does factoring polynomials help us solve polynomial equations? So this is the beginning of unit 6, and this unit is all about factoring. Um, and then we'll talk about what factoring actually means um, later on in the notes and what it's going to do to help us later on, but it is super important that you are able to find a GCF or a greatest common factor out of any polynomial or any term. So, or any amount of terms. We're going to review some vocab from unit one. So I'm going to go ahead and go over what a monomial, binomial, and a trinomial is, as well as a polynomial. So a monomial is something that consists of one term. Okay, so examples of one terms would be like x squared or 5x. Remember that a term is separated by plus or minus signs. So x squared is one term, 5x is one term, or you can think about 3xy. This is also one term. They're all connected together by multiplication, um, so they're considered one term. In order for something to be like more than a term, you would have to have addition and minus signs, which I'll show you in the next example. A binomial, for example, is two terms. Okay, now something that has two terms um, would have to have the same thing as a monomial, but with a plus or minus sign in between. So for example, x to the fifth minus three, that's considered two terms. x to the fifth is one term, the negative three is another term. They're separate by a plus or minus sign. Or we could have seven x plus six. Those are also binomials, they're two terms. And you're like, how am I supposed to remember all this? Well, remember the key word in all of these are mono, mono meaning one, by which means two, so you'd think two terms, so which would make us think that a trinomial would be three terms. Okay, and so we'll give an example of something that is three terms. Um, for example, 2x cubed minus 2x plus 7. This is considered a trinomial. It has three different terms uh, separated by plus and minus signs. So that is considered a trinomial. Now a polynomial is considered something that is just one or more terms. So this is just an umbrella term for any of the previous three. So it's a generic term, right? Like there's different types of workers, right? But there's teachers, there's doctors, there's physicians, all of that. Everyone's considered a worker, but we all have specific name titles. So a polynomial can be anything. It can be one term, it could be seven terms. It could be three terms, it could be five terms. It could be any amount of terms. It's just an umbrella term for everything. But we wanna give the first three special names. So if it has one, two, or three terms, they get special names. So if it has one term, it's a monomial, two terms, binomial, three terms, trinomial. Okay. So we're going to, to review the distributive property. Now you guys learned a distributive property in sixth grade, um, so let's go ahead and review what distributing means. So distribution, right? When we have distribution, we take the outside term and we are distributing it into the terms on the parentheses. So I'm going to take the 3x and I'm going to distribute. Now remember when we're distributing, what operation is that? That is multiplication. So I'm going to distribute to all of the terms on the inside. So inside of my parentheses, I have two terms. Now I know you're like, okay, I already know how to distribute. Like, I don't know why you're going so slow. It's super important when we're understanding the process of distributing because when we're factoring, that's the, it's kind of different. So we want to make sure we understand the difference between them. So when we're distributing, we are multiplying. Now you multiply to however many terms are in those parentheses. So because I have two terms in the parentheses, I'm going to distribute the 3x on that's on the outside twice. So I'm going to distribute the 3x in to the x. Well, 3x times x is going to give me 3x squared. Okay. There's technically a 1 here, right? So it's technically 1x. So 3 times 1 is going to give me 3. x times x gives me x squared. Okay, not 2x. So that's important to remember. x times x is x squared. x plus x is 2x. So these are different, okay? So make sure you remember the difference between those. So we have 3x times x, which gives us 3x squared. And then we have 3x times 4. Now remember, I'm drawing these arrows to represent that I am distributing. I'm multiplying to each individual term. 3x times positive 4 is going to be positive 12x, okay? So what mathematical operation were we using here? We were using multiplication. Okay, so when we learn distribution, the operation that we're doing here is multiplication. We are multiplying terms together. So what operation would be used if I wanted to go backwards? So if I wanted to go backwards from distributing, what operation would that be? 
Think about it. If I went forwards and multiplied, how would I go backwards? Well, you'd think the opposite. So the opposite operation would be, in this case, division. Okay, so before we actually begin factoring polynomials, we've got to review what a GCF is in general. So we have to know what that is. So we're going to find the GCF of these next four problems, and they're all a little bit different, so go ahead and just stick with me. Now, this is how you guys found it in sixth grade. We're not going to be able to do this for every problem because it would just take way too long. But I'm going to review what a finding a GCF is in a little bit. So... We're going to find the greatest common factor of all of these problems. So I'm going to find the greatest common factor of 16 and 40. So the way your teacher might have taught you is that you made a t-chart. So you had 16 and you had 40 on one side. And then you list all of the factors. Remember, factors are two things that multiply together to make something. So I want to think about factors of 16, two numbers that multiply to make 16. Well, the first thing I think of is 2 times 8, okay, 4 times 4 and 1 times 16. Now your goal here is to list as many factors as possible. So it's super important that you know your multiplication facts and your division facts and knowing all of those numbers that could multiply to make 16. So these are the three sets of numbers that could make 16. So these are the three sets of factors. So again, a factor are two things that multiply together to make a term. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and list factors of 40. So I have 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 4 times 10, and 5 times 8. Okay, so those are the four sets of factors for 40. Okay, now when you're looking for the greatest common factor, the key word here is greatest. You're looking for the largest number that they have in common, right? They have a lot of numbers in common. They have one in common, they have two in common, but you want to find the greatest. You want to find the largest number that they both have in common. And the largest number that both of these lists have in common are the 8. They both have 8 in common. So in this case, our greatest common factor, our GCF, is going to be 8. Now, we're not going to be finding the GCF like this in Unit 6, but this is just kind of a little bit of a review going into what we're doing for this lesson. All right, number 2, we're asked to find the GCF of 12, 42, and 90. So I'm going to go ahead and make a T-chart, but it's going to not be a T because there's technically three things here. So it's like an extended T-chart, I suppose. Okay, so I have, three, um, I have three numbers here, and I'm going to list all of the factors that I can think of. So uh, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. So these sets of numbers multiply to make 12. Remember, that's what a factor is, right? Factors are numbers that multiply to make another expression. All right, factors of 42. So I know that 1 times 42 is 42. I know that 6 times 7 is 42. Right? So it's really important we know our multiplication facts for this unit. It's unit. super important. So when you're thinking about factors, thinking about, oh, well, 42 is even. So if it's even, it has to go with 2. So I know that 2 has to go into it, 2 times 21. And then we have one more set of factors, and it is actually 3 times 14. So you always want to make sure you know all of your factors when you're trying to find something, right? So these are all the factors for 42, I believe. Um, now... A trick that I learned was that if it's divisible by 2 and 3, it's divisible by 6. So I know that 42 is divisible by 2, and it's divisible by 3, so it has to be divisible by 6. These are just some of the tricks that I learned when I was in school. Okay, listing factors of 90. So 90 is a pretty big number, so we're going to have to go through this. Well, I know 1 times 90 is going to give me 90. Um, I know 90 is an even number, so it has to go into 2, so 2 times 45. Okay. 90 also ends in a 0, so I learned that numbers that end in a 0 always have 10 that go into it, so 9 times 10, okay? And um, I know that 5 will also go into this, so let's see, 5 times 90 divided by 5, that's 18. What else do we have? 3 times 30, right? Now again, if it goes into 2 and it goes into 3, then 6 has to be a multiple as well, so let's do 90 divided by 6 in my calculator, so 6 times 15. So that is also another set. Um, I think that is it, but I could be missing some. It is possible, right? It is quite possible. Um, we're not perfect human beings. But we're looking for the greatest common factor between all three numbers. We're looking for the largest number that goes into all of these, okay? When we're looking for the greatest common factor, it has to go into everything that you're looking for. So you, while you're looking at your list, you're trying to figure out the biggest number that goes into everything, and it is 6. So our greatest common factor for this problem is going to be 6. 
Oops. Oh my gosh, struggling over here. There we go. All right, now let's move into something that's a little bit different. We haven't done greatest common factors with variables before, so I'm gonna show you how you would do that with variables. So we're comparing x cubed and x to the fifth, and we're trying to find the greatest common factor. x cubed, x to the fifth. Oops. Okay, well, when you're looking for the greatest common factor for these, right, you wanna list out the multiples of things that make x cubed. So what does x cubed really mean? Like, what does x squared mean, right? x squared means I have x times itself twice, so I have x times x. So what does x cubed mean? Well, we learned the laws of exponents already, right? So we know x cubed means that we have x times itself three times. So that's gonna be x times x times x. That's the only combination for me to make x cubed. Literally the only combination, right? That's the only way I can get x cubed. Well, how would I get x to the fifth? Well, the only way for me to get x to the fifth is if I have x times itself five times. That's the only way. That's what x to the fifth means. So you're like, well, what is my greatest common factor here? That doesn't make any sense. Well, you're looking for the greatest amount that they have in common. So I want you to think about it. What's the greatest amount of x's that they both have in common? They have three x's in common, right? Do we see how there's at least three in each, right? Now, why can't I have four in common? Well, because this one over here only has three. So I can't say that I have four x's in common. So we have three x's in common. So our GCF here is not three, right? We're saying that there's three x's in common. So our greatest common factor here would be x cubed, x times itself three times. I have three of them together and multiplied together in common. x times x times x is x cubed x times x times x is x cubed. So my greatest common factor here is x cubed. Okay? All right, let's move on to something a little bit more. We have 9x squared y to the fourth and 12xy to the fifth. So again, I'm going to make my little t-chart here. 9x squared y to the fourth. And then I have 12xy to the fifth. Now, at this point, I'm hoping that we're pretty fluent with the numbers part. So the way you find greatest common factors with expressions like these, with terms like these, is you always want to do the things that they have in common. So I'm going to start off with the 9 and the 12 for our regular numbers, our coefficients at the front, okay? So 9 and 12, what's the largest number that these both have in common together? The largest factor, the largest number that goes into them as a multiple, um, not as a multiple, as a as a factor, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so the largest number that goes into both is three, right? If I were to make a list like this, if I were to make a list with nine and 12 that looked like number one, then I would end up with the largest number they having, them having in common is three. Okay, moving on, the largest thing we wanna do here is x and x squared and x, I'm sorry. So x squared, remember x squared means x times x, and x is just a single x by itself. So you wanna think about what's the most amount of x's that they have in common? Well, it's just a single x, okay? And then lastly, we have y to the fourth and y to the fifth, okay? Well, y to the fourth means I have y times itself four times, okay? And then y to the fifth means I have y times itself five times, so I want to think about what's the most amount of y's that they both have in common. Well, they have four y's in common together. So what would my GCF be here then? Well, remember, your greatest common factor is the largest thing that they all have in common. So the largest number they both had in common was 3. The most amount of x's they had in common was a single x. And the most amount of y's that they had in common was 4 of them. So y to the 4th. So our greatest common factor is 3xy to the 4th. Now, this is just finding the greatest common factor. We actually haven't done any real factoring yet. So before we actually, we're not even into the main part of the notes, we're kind of just reviewing and kind of getting into how do we factor with variables. So our greatest common factor for number four is three x, y to the fourth. Okay, so the key here, if you haven't noticed already, I'm hoping that you've noticed, but when we have variables, so not numbers, but when we have variables, the GCF is always going to be the smallest exponent or the lowest exponent. I'm gonna call it lowest. Makes more sense mathematically, the lowest. And what I mean by that is the, the smallest value, the lowest value. So for example, if I had 
x to the 17th and x to the 24. I know that their greatest common factor would be x to the 17 because I know this one has 17 of them, this one has 24, so the most that they have in common is 17. So it's always going to be the one that's the smaller number. So same here with the y's. We had y to the 4th and y to the 5th. They most had they, the most that they had in common was y to the 4th because they both have at least 4. With the x's, we have x squared and x. Well, the most that they can both have is x because this one has 2. This one only has 1. So I can't say that they have 2 in common because this one only has 1 to give, right? So it's the most that they both have together. They both have each. Okay, so let's kind of review what we just did. The greatest common factor, okay, the greatest common factor is the largest number or variable, okay? The greatest common factor is the largest number or variable that can be divided out of all terms, okay? So again, like number four, your greatest common factor here is 3xy to the fourth. It's the largest number, 3, and the largest variables that you could take out, x and y to the fourth, out of every term. So out of these two terms, this was the most I could take out of both, okay? So your greatest common factor is the largest number and variable that can be divided out of all of your terms. Now factoring, right, is the opposite of distributing. Now this is a key, key thing here. Factoring is the opposite of distributing, right? We're not, when we're distributing, what operation do we do? We multiply. When we factor, we divide. In unit six, we're gonna do a lot of factoring. So we're gonna do a lot of division. Um, so division is gonna be a key thing for us. So distributing, right, distributing like we did in this problem, is the operation of multiplication. What we're doing is we're basically reversing distribution, right? We're doing the opposite of distributing. We're undoing distribution by factoring, okay? And when we factor, we're dividing here. All right, so this is the last page of notes. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to find some factors in a calculator in a little bit at the very end. Um, and then if you're curious to know how to use that, you can ask me, and I can definitely show you how to use it. Um, but it's definitely probably something saved best for the classroom because um, it's just better if I was in person with you. So before we actually start this, because we're dividing, and I'm very, very big on dividing and making sure that we understand, okay, notice, what is 3 divided by 3? What is 3 divided by 3? You're like, oh, they'll cancel. Okay, sure, they cancel, but does it equal 0, right? No, it doesn't. If I do 3 divided by 3 in my calculator right now, what number do I get? I get 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Yes, it cancels because it simplifies because it's a whole. 3 out of 3 equals 1, but it does not equal 0. That is super, super important that you understand that, okay? x divided by x is also 1. If I have 3 divided by 3 equals 1, x divided by x equals 1, right? So if it's the same thing on the top and the bottom, it's going to equal 1. Yes, technically they cancel, right? If I had 2x divided by x, these would cancel and I would have a 2 left, sure. But that x cancels becomes a 1. So then I have 2 times 1 because x divided by x is 1, which equals 2. Now, when something cancels, you can cancel it, but you got to put the coefficient, right? So these go away, but what number is technically in front of those x's is technically a 1. So x divided by x equals 1. Okay, so I just want to make that super clear because it does not equal 0 when we get that misconception. It does not equal 0. It does not. Okay does not equal zero. All right, so we're going to start with finding our greatest common factor. So this is our first look into factoring, okay? Now I want you to make sure that you're following step by step because the steps are similar to each problem. However, you want to make sure that you're following them correctly so that you don't leave off something by accident. Um, so number one, we are going to do this and then we're actually going to move on to the rest. It's only like what, like five, eight problems? Yeah, we'll get through this. Okay, so we have 4x squared y squared plus 16x to the x, y, I'm sorry. How many terms do we have here? We have two terms. Remember, terms are separated by plus and minus signs, so we have two terms here. Now remember, we're factoring, right? So distribution is multiplication. So when we're factoring, we're doing the opposite. So when we're factoring, what operation are we doing? We're doing division. So the first step I want you to always do is write a division bar under all of your terms. So in this case, I have a division bar under two terms because that's, I have a binomial here. I have only two terms. Okay, so then you're going to begin the task of finding the largest number that goes into everything or finding the largest number or variable that goes into everything. So, okay, we've got to be really good at our division and multiplication facts here. So you always do the things in common, just like 
number four here. Okay, so looking at the numbers, I have four and I have 16. The largest number that goes into both of those is going to be four. That's the largest number I can divide out of both of those. Remember, we're dividing. The largest number that can divide out of four and 16 is four. That's their greatest common factor. Okay, moving on to the x's, I have x squared and I have x. Okay, what's the largest amount of x's I can take out of both? Think about that. I have, what does x squared mean? It means I have two x's, right? This one means I have one. So what's the most amount of x's that can be taken out of both? Only a single x, okay? Because this one only has one. I can't take out two. It's not possible. Okay, moving on. I have y squared and I have y. What's the largest amount of y's I can take out? A single y. Now, if you're having a lot of trouble with this, please come in and see me because it is super important that you understand this lesson because this is the basics for the rest of unit six. So it's really, really important. Just like how slope, finding slope was the basic for all of unit three, this is super important for all of unit six. Okay, now what are you doing? Remember, distribution is the opposite of factoring. When we distribute, right, you're doing three, you have three x plus seven, so you multiply in and you get uh, three x plus 21, right? Well, we're doing the opposite. So I want to go from this step back to this step. So when I'm undoing the distribution, right, I'm undoing it, I have to put the number, I'm taking out what I distributed. So what's happening here is the 4xy is going to go on the outside of my parentheses. So it's going on the outside, and I'm undoing distribution. Okay? And then I have my parentheses here. So this is, what, this is where we go now. So I'm going to put the parentheses like that. Okay? So we're going to start dividing. We're going to start simplifying, okay? Now, we have 4. We're dividing, so I'm doing the first term first. We have 4 divided by 4. Now, that cancels, and what does it equal? It equals 1. So we have 1. And then we have x squared divided by x. So if I have two x's, They have tardy bells going today, I'm sorry. Um, if I have two x's in the top and I am taking away one, how many x's do I have left? I have a single x left. If I have two y's here and I'm taking out a single y, remember y squared means I have y times y. I'm taking out one y, how many y's do I have left? I have one y left, okay? Now I've simplified this. Now, do I have to write the one in the front? I do not, so you can always choose to take, get rid of the one um, but there are times where the one needs to stay. The only time where the one doesn't have to stay is if you have variables there. If there are variables there, it is understood that there is a one there. However, if there's no variables there, I need to see that there's a one because if you don't put anything, that means you have zero. And I need to make sure that you have one. Okay. So I'm leaving off the one. All right. Now we have four divided by 16. Remember, we're dividing. That's what the division bar means. Uh, uh, not 4 divided by 16, 16 divided by 4. Well, 16 divided by 4 is positive 4. And I know it's positive because of this positive sign. Okay? And then I have x divided by x. Well, if I have an x and I take away an x, do I have any x's left? No, they cancel. And I have a y and I take away a y, what happens? They cancel. So what do I have left? Just the 4. There's nothing left. So I'm going to put this over here. Okay? Now you're like, what did I just do? We undid distribution. This is our answer. We're undoing it. You're like, I don't understand. What do you mean by undoing distribution? How, how did I undo distribution? Well, let's do something real quick. Let's distribute. 4xy times xy is going to be 4. x times x is x squared. y times y is y squared. And then 4xy times 4 is going to be positive 16xy. I want you to look at this, and I want you to look at this. What do you notice? They're the same. So what are we doing when we're factoring? We're undoing distribution. We're doing the opposite of distribution. We're undoing all of this. So we're putting it back outside the parentheses like it was never distributed in the first place. Okay? So that would be our answer for number one. That's our factored form. So I want super slow on number one because it's our first time doing it, you know? Okay, moving on to number two. Now, how many terms do we have here? Well, we have three terms here. So I'm going to put three division bars. One, two, three. We have three terms here. Okay. Now, when you're starting with your uh, greatest common factor, you always start with the largest, um, not the largest, the, uh, the numbers first. I like to start with the regular numbers. So we have two, negative eight, and positive six. 
And you're like, does it eight really matter? Not really. So you can actually just think about it just being eight. It doesn't have to be. Now I'll tell you what negatives will matter, and that's in number three. Number three has a star next to it because the negatives matter there. But in number two, negatives don't really matter here. So I'm looking for the largest number that goes into all three. Two, eight, and six. What is the largest number I can divide out of all three of those numbers? The largest number is going to be two. That's the largest number I can divide out of everything. Okay? And then the x's is what I have next. So you're looking for the things that they have in common. So this has x cubed, this is x squared, and this has a single x. So I want you to think about the largest amount of x's I could take out. Well, the first term has three x's, the second term has two x's, and the last one only has one. I have x cubed, x squared, and x. So what's the most x's I can take out of all of them? I can only take out a single x. Why is that? This one only has one, so I can't take out two. It doesn't have two, right? So the most I can take out of everything is one. Okay, now the 2x, this part right here that you put underneath everything, that is known as your greatest common factor. Your greatest common factor goes outside the parentheses, right? Your greatest common factor is being undistributed. I'm undoing distribution. I am factoring. It is going back outside the parentheses, okay? Okay, so I'm going back outside. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start dividing. Remember, the 2x goes on the outside. So 2 divided by 2 here is going to cancel and become 1. And then we have x cubed divided by x. So this is 3x's, right? I have 3x's, and I'm taking away an x. So how many x's do I have left? I have two of them left, so x squared. Now, because I have a variable there, I don't have to write the 1. And then I have negative 8 divided by 2. So once I finish with one term, I just move on to the next one. Negative 8 divided by 2 is going to be negative 4. Okay, and then I have two x's here taking away an x. So when we're dividing, we're just taking away. So remember the laws of exponents when I'm dividing variables, I'm just subtracting exponents. So I have two x's and I'm taking away an x, so I only have one left. Remember, two x's, I'm taking away one, so I just have one left. And then I have positive 6 divided by 2, which is positive 3. And then these x's actually cancel, right? If I have an x and I take away that x, it's no longer there. So I close my parentheses, and I'm done factoring. Remember, factoring, we're undoing the distribution. That's why the parentheses are there, because earlier somebody distributed, right? Somebody distributed here. And so when they distributed, they got this. Well, we're undoing that. We're taking the 2x back out. We're taking it out of the parentheses, and we're undoing distribution. So this will be our final expression. And I'm actually going to recolor this because it's going to bother me. Okay, so those are blue, which means the insides of these are blue as well. Okay. Moving on to number three. Now, number three is special because... If you notice in the first and second problems, the first term of both of these were both positive. The first term. Now, what about the first term in this one? Well, the first term here is negative. So here's something super, 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 super important. Like, they're going to be more, the most important thing in unit six, maybe. Okay. If, uh, let's do this in a different color. Let's do pink. If the first term, that's not going to fit. If the first term is negative, you must you must divide out a negative. Okay, you must, like you have to, okay? So let's explain what that means, okay? So again, this process would be the same as always, okay? So we see that there's two terms. We have negative 6m squared. We have negative 3, two separate terms. So I'm going to have two division bars because I'm factoring, which is the opposite of distribution, right? Division is the opposite, so I'm doing the opposite here. Now, um, I'm going to look at my two numbers here. So I have negative 6 and I have 3, right? So essentially 3. The, the negative sign only matters if it's the very front one. So like I don't really care that the second one is negative 3. That never matters. If it's the second one, I don't really care. All right, but if it's the first one, I do care. Now, what's the largest number that I can divide out of both of these, right? So the largest number that they both have a factor of. So if I were to list all the factors of 6 and all of the factors of 3, the largest number I could take out of both would be 3, right? I can divide 3 out of both of these evenly. It's always the largest number you can divide out evenly. But because the first term is negative, 
because the first term is negative here, I must take out a negative 3. So in the last two problems, when we took out our GCF, the number in the front was positive. When I took out that GCF here, 4xy, it was positive. Same thing with the 2x, right? So even though this was a negative 8, it didn't phase me because it's not the first term and I didn't care. But because the first term in number 3 is negative, I have to take out a negative when I'm doing my GCF. So and then I want you to think, can you take out any m's here? Like, I have m squared here, but can I take out an m out of both of these? The answer is no, and why not? Well, because in this term, there is no m, right? There is no m there, so I cannot take out an m out of either, which means that my greatest common factor, the largest thing I can take out of both terms, is just negative 3. So negative 3 is going to go on the outside of my parentheses. Remember, your greatest common factor, the largest thing you can take out of everything, goes on the outside of the parentheses. In number one, the largest thing I could take out is 4xy, so one on the outside of the parentheses. All right. So then, once you do that, everything's settled and you just simplify. So, negative 6 divided by negative 3 is going to give me positive 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 3. Now, what happens to this m squared? Well, nothing happened to it because we didn't divide any m's out, so it stays. Okay, and then next we have negative 3 divided by negative 3. Now, this is super important that we don't mess this up. Now, negative 3 divided by negative 3, what does that equal? That equals positive 1. Negative divided by negative is make a positive. Now, 3 divided by 3 technically cancels, but we talked about this. What does 3 divided by 3 equal? It equals 1. So, you want to make sure you put a 1 there. And you're like, well, what if I just cancel it and then I don't write it, Right? Well, if you don't write it, what number did you write for me technically? If you don't write anything, you wrote nothing, right? And what's nothing as a number? If you write nothing, you're telling me it's 0, which is not true because what is one, uh, 3 divided by 3? It is 1. So you want to be super careful with that. Okay, moving on to number 4. 17x to the 4th plus 51x squared y to the 3rd. All right, so how many terms do we have here? That's how we factor. So you look at how many terms you have. Here I have two terms. So I'm going to do two division bars. Now, we're going to look for the largest number that goes into both. So these are kind of larger numbers, so I have to think about this. So I want to think about all the numbers I multiply to make to 17 and all the numbers I multiply to make 51. Now, I know that 17 is prime. Now, if you don't know what prime means, prime means that that number is only divisible by 1 in itself. So the only factors of 17 are 1 and 17. However, I know that 17 goes into 51. So the largest number I can take out of both 17 and 51. Remember, you want to look at your largest numbers first. So 17 and 51. So your regular numbers, I mean, not largest. Your regular numbers here, the largest thing I could take out is 17 out of both. Okay. And then the next thing I want to look at is the next variable. So I see that they both have x's in common. So I have x to the fourth and x squared. Okay. Well, I have x to the fourth, so that's four x's. And then I have x squared, and that's two x's. So what's the most amount of x's I can take out of both? The most amount, most amount of x's would be x squared. I would be able to take away 2. This one has 2, so I can take away all of it. This one has 4, but I can't take 4 because this one doesn't have 4. So the most I can take out is 2. Now question, could I take out any y's? No, because this one doesn't have any y's. So no y's get taken out. So then I move on. I'm like, all right, I'm ready. My greatest common factor here is 17x squared. That is my greatest common factor. So I'm going to put that on the outside of a parentheses. So that's my GCF. The GCF always goes on the outside of your parentheses. And then you move on and you simplify. So we go. 17 divided by 17 is 1. So I'm going to put a 1 here. X to the fourth divided by x squared. So I have four x's and I take away two x's. How many x's do I have left? I have two left. If I have four and I take away two, I have two still. Now that one is not necessary because I know that x squared is there and I don't need to write a one there to know that there's a one there. So because x squared is there, I know that there is a one and everything is okay. All right, and then I continue on. I'm, I'm done with the first term. I move on to the second. 51 divided by 17 is going to give me positive three. And then I have x squared divided by x squared. I have two x's and I take away two x's. If I have two and I take away two, they cancel. The x's are no longer there. It's gone. It goes away. And then what about that y cubed? Well, because I didn't take out any y's, the y cubed is going to stay, oh my gosh, it's going to stay as, what is going on? Stay as is. Too bad my iPad screen can't stay, right? All right. 
So that would be our final expression. So I'm undoing distribution. I have factored. I've taken out what they distributed in, and I'm putting it back outside the parentheses. I forgot to box this one. I'm going crazy, you guys. I'm going crazy. Oh, what is going on with my boxes? Some of them are, like, not complete for some reason. That is super, super strange. All right, so we're checking everything. Everything looks good. All right, perfect. All right, so we have four left. Now, they're all just a little bit different. It's, it's, you really need practice with these. So, number five, how many terms do we have here? Well, I have three terms, so I'm going to do three division bars. Remember, we're factoring, so distribution, we're multiplying, factoring, we're dividing. That's why we have division bars. Now, I want to look for the number that they all have in common first. So, I like to look at my big numbers. So, I have four. Now, you're like, well, there is no number here. Well, what number is technically there if it's not there? It's technically a negative one. And then I have ten. All right, so I have three numbers here, 4, 1, and 10. So what is the largest number I can divide out of everything? Well, it's 1, right? I have 4, 1, and I have 10, right? If I had 4 and 10, the largest number I could divide out of both of those is 2. But 1, the only thing that goes into 1 is really itself. So the largest number I can take out is just 1, okay? And then you move on to your next variable that you see. So I see k's next. I have k cubed, k, and k. So I want to think about the largest amount of k's that I have. So the first term I have three k's, second term I have one, and the third term I have one. So what's the largest amount of k's that I can take out? Just a single one. So I have k here, and I have a single k under all of those. So just one single one, because that's the most that these two have, so I can only take out one. All right, the next variable I see are r's, k. Well, this one has r squared. This one has an r, but the last one doesn't have any r. So can I take out any r's then? No, because they don't all have it. They all have to have it. So then I move on. Okay, I can't take out any r's, so then I move on. Well, I notice that there's q's as well. So I have q squared, q cubed, and q squared. There's, th there's a q in all of them, so I can take out q's for sure. All right, well, the first one has 2. The second one has 3. The last one has 2. So the most I can take out is 2, q squared. All right, so that means that my GCF, my greatest common factor, is KQ squared. Now, I don't have to write the 1 there because there's understood 1 there, so I'm not going to write it. I'm going to write this a little larger. Okay, so let's start dividing. Well, 4 divided by 1 is just 4. We have K cubed divided by k. So you want to make sure you address everything that's going on. So I have k cubed. I have three k's, and I'm taking away a single k, so I have two left. Three, take away one, is going to be two. Now the r squared here, I want to make sure I don't forget about it. I didn't take it out, so I want to leave it there. I never removed it. And then I have q squared taking out q squared. So q squared divided by q squared is going to cancel. If I have two q's and I take away two q's, I have no q's left. So then I move on to the next term. Negative 1 divided by 1 is going to give me negative 1, right? Negative 1 divided by 1. And then I have um, k divided by k. If I have a single k and I take away, take away the only k that I have, they're going to cancel. They go away completely. It's not there anymore, right? Because I had 1, take away 1, I have nothing left. So don't forget about this r here. We didn't do anything to it, so we want to make sure that we address that as well. And then the next thing I have are my Q's. I have three Q's, and I'm taking away two Q's, so I'm going to have one Q left. Now, you could put Q to the 1, but I'm not going to put Q to the 1 because it looks a little funny. Uh, you can if you want to, if that helps you feel a little bit better. I have three Q's, take away two, I have one left. Moving on to the next term. Negative 10 divided by 1 is going to be negative 10. Okay? K, taking away a K is going to cancel. I have two Q's divided by Q squared again. Q squared divided by Q squared cancels. So all I have is just that negative 10. There is nothing else on the back there because it all canceled out. K divided by K cancels. Q squared divided by Q squared cancels. So that's all I have left. So this is my final expression. So hopefully you see that there's a pattern. It's kind of all the same, right? We're just dividing out the largest thing that they all have in common. All right, moving on to number 6. 31a to the 6b cubed plus 63a to the 5th. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I have two terms. I'm going to do two division bars. Now, I hope you notice that anything I write under one bar, I always write it underneath the second one. So if you look at number 4, they both have 17 go into them, so I wrote 17 underneath both. All right. Now, I have the larger number here is... Uh, not the largest number, the regular number coefficient is 31 and 63. Now, I know this, I'm not sure if you know this, but 31's prime. 31 only goes into 1 in itself. So, 
I know that there's no other factors of 31. Now, 63, I have to think about. Can 31 go into 63 at all? It doesn't go in evenly. So the largest number I can take out of 31 and 63 is going to be 1. That's the largest number I can take out. So then I move on. The next variable I see are a, so I have a to the sixth and a to the fifth. So they both have an a, they all have an a, so I can take out some a's here. I have a to the sixth and a to the fifth, so the most a's I can take out is five of them, a to the fifth. Okay. Now the last thing I have are b's, b to the third. But because that second one doesn't have any b's, I can't take out any b's. So my GCF here, the largest thing I can take out of everything, is going to be a to the fifth. Again, that one is not necessary in the front, but if you would like to write it, you may do so. Oh my gosh, stop moving. A to the fifth. And then I start my parentheses. Remember, we're undoing distribution. So that greatest common factor goes on the outside, and then we're undoing it by dividing everything out. So 31 divided by 1 is going to give me 31. A to the sixth divided by A to the fifth. So if I have six A's and I take away five A's, I'm going to have one A left over. And that B cubed is going to stay as is because nothing happened to it. It just stayed. I didn't take anything out. And then we move on to the next term. 63 divided by 1 is positive 63. A to the fifth divided by A to the fifth. Well, I have five A's and I take away five A's. I have no A's left. So those cancel, and all I have left is A to the fifth times 31A cubed plus 63. Okay, moving on to number 7. We have negative 108c squared n squared p to the fifth plus 34c to the fourth n p to the fourth. All right, we have two terms, two very long terms, but we only have two, so we're going to do two division bars. Okay, now I'm looking at my two numbers here. So I have negative 108 and I have 34. Now, something important. Something super, super important. That first term is a negative. If the first term is a negative, you must divide out a negative. You have to. You have to take out a negative. So I know for a fact that whatever number I take out, it has to be a negative number. Now, you have to be able to find the factors of 34 and 108. So think about the largest number that goes into both. Okay. Now, the largest number that's going to divide out of both is 2. Now, if you're curious to know how to get that number or how I know that it's that number, well, one, I know the multiples of 34, right? 1 times 34 and 2 times 17. That's it. That's all the multiples of 34. For 108, oh, let's see, 1 times 108, 2 times, what's 108 divided by 2? That is 54. And then we have uh, 3 times something, 108 divided by 3. It's going to be 36. 4 times 27. Um, I know that if it goes into 2 and 3, it has to go into 6. So 108 divided by 6 is 18. And then we have 9 times 12. And I think that is it. So those are all the factors. So then I look at the largest number that they both have in common. And in this case, it is 2. Now, there is a small calculator trick that I can show you if you're having trouble with your multiplication facts. Um, it does take some time away from what you're doing. So I don't suggest that you heavily use it for every problem if you can do it in your head. But for bigger numbers like 108, I would definitely suggest it. Now, so the large number that they both have in common is 2. But because that first term is a negative, I have to take out a negative 2. So I'm taking out a 2 because that's the large number they both have in common. But because this 7 has a, or not 7, because this term in the front has a negative, it has to be negative in the front. Then you move on. Next variable. Next variable I see are c's. So I have c squared, c to the fourth. So the largest amount of c's I can take out is 2. So c squared. The next variable I see is n squared and n. The largest amount of n's I could take out is one single n because this is technically 1. And then we move on to the last one, which is are the p's, right? p to the fifth, p to the fourth. The largest amount of p's I can take out are four of them, or is four of them, okay? Because one has five, one has four. The largest I can take out of both is four. You also take out the largest. That's why it's called greatest common factor. So your greatest common factor here is negative 2 c squared n p to the fourth. So it's very long, okay? And then you start your parentheses. All right, so we begin. Negative 108 divided by negative 2 is going to give me positive 56. Oh, sorry, 54. My bad. 54. 108 divided by 2, right? Yep. And it's positive because a negative 108 divided by negative 2 is going to be positive 54. Now, c squared divided by c squared. I have two c's and I take away two c's, so they cancel. 
Then I have n squared divided by n. I have two n's and I take away one n. I'm going to have one n left over. So the c's are no longer there because they've canceled. N's, we have a single n left. And then I have p to the fifth divided by p to the fourth. I have five take away four. That's going to give me a single p left over. Now again, if you want to write the one exponent on top because it helps you with the subtraction, you can, but I'm not going to, and you're typically not going to see that one there. All right, moving on, we have 34 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 17, okay? And then I have, the next thing is c to the fourth divided by c squared. I have four c's, I take away two c's, so I have c squared left over, I have two of them left over. n divided by n, if I have an n and I take away that n, there's no n's left. And then I have p to the 4 divided by p to the 4. We have 4 p's, take away 4 p's, they all go away. So those cancel, and all I have left in the back half is negative 17 c squared. So my GCF, I'm going to rewrite this because it looks kind of sloppy. Oops. Oh, gosh. Here we go. All right, so our GCF here was negative 2 c squared, n p to the fourth, and then we had 54 n p minus 17 c squared. So I like to call the inside the leftovers, right? I, call, I like to call that the leftovers. When we divide stuff out, that's what we have left over. All right, so go ahead and box that. Okay. And then we have number 8. That's our final one. Um, 3k minus 12k squared g plus 30k to the fifth. Now here I have three terms. So I'm going to have three division bars. Okay. Now, you always look at the, the number first, the coefficient. So I have 3, 12, and 30. Now, I would not divide out a negative here because the first term here is not negative. Even though this 12 is negative, it doesn't matter. Only if the first term is negative. So the largest number I can divide out of all of these, the largest number that goes into all of these evenly is going to be 3. 3 goes into all of these numbers. And then I want to look for the next thing that goes into all of them, so I'm the next variable. So k, I have k, k squared, and k to the fifth. So let's think about the largest amount of k's I can take out. Well, I have 1, I have 2, and then I have 5. So the largest I can take out of all of them is just one single. Okay? And then I see that I have a g here, but there's no other things that have g, so I can't take it, any of those out. So my GCF, my greatest common factor that goes on the outside of my parentheses, is going to be 3k. And I'm going to start my parentheses. So 3 divided by 3 is equals to what? Right? It cancels technically, but it equals 1. k divided by k cancels. So I have to have this 1 here to represent that I have 1 left. Okay? That is super important. If you cancel out everything and you don't write anything there and you put nothing, remember nothing tells me that you're putting 0. So you don't want to put nothing. You want to put 1. Okay? Make sure you put 1 there. All right. And then I have negative 12 divided by 3 is going to give me negative 4. k squared divided by k. If I have two k's, take away k. I have a k left over. And don't forget about the g that we did not mess with. Moving on, we have 30 divided by 3. Remember, dividing. 30 divided by 3 is going to be positive 10. Okay. And then I have k to the fifth divided by k. I have five k's. Take away one k. I have k to the fourth left over. All right. And that is my factored form here. So again, factoring is the opposite of distribution. We're undoing the distribution that happened, which is why it's on the outside of the parentheses. Now to find factors of numbers in a calculator, um, you're going to hit the y equals screen, and then it's going to pop up a bunch of y equals there for you. And so if I wanted to find the factors of like 16 and 40, um, what I would do is I would do y equals number divided by x. Um, and so if I wanted to do, again, this is easier shown in person. I'm not going to show it in the video. Um, but if I wanted to find factors, so on your calculator screen, it's going to show like y2, y3. So it's going to look like that if you click the y equals button. That button is on, the, on your graphing calculator. It is over here. It's the very top corner on the left. Um, but what you want to do, let's say I want to find factors of 16. So I do 16 divided by x. And I want to find factors of 40. And I would do 40 divided by x. And then after I type in those two things, remember your number divided by x, you'll hit the second button and then the graph button. On your graphing calculator, your graph button is located right here on the top right. It says graph on it. Um, and then it'll show a table. And what you're looking for in your table, so the x column is going to say like 1, 2, 3, 4. It'll always say that. And then you're going to have your y1 and your y2. So you're looking for the number that both of these have in common. And so in this case with 16 and 40, I think the largest number that they both have in common is 4, I believe. Am I crazy? Oh, sorry, it's 8. It's silly. Okay. So you'd look for the largest number that they both have in common on both sides of the list, and it would be 8. 
Again, this would be a lot easier shown in person, so if you really want to know how to use this calculator trick, please ask me. But that is it for the notes for Greatest Common Factor.